Hey! Oh. A few months ago, as I'm sure most of you already know, I attempted my L1 certification. This went off fine, minus one fin cracking, and I got my L1 certification. There's also a video of it on my YouTube channel if you want to go check it out. After I got into the high-powered rocketry sector, I wanted to create a rocket that would A, not only be indestructible, so that I could fly it many, many times without any damage, but also B, have a rocket that I could test with different systems. In this case, that was my new nose cone design. This nose cone allowed me to reduce the need for an AV bay by holding the electronics inside the nose cone. In this case, the electronics are a egg timer rocketry ion, and then also a astrogram from Estes. As you saw in the intro, because of my failed camera placings, one of the fins got shredded, it kind of ruined the flight, and the nose cone ended up cracking. Which, this is all fixable, and I'm going to create another video soon about how I fixed it, as well as iteration 2 of my nose cone design. But for now, I'm going to roll the footage, and I'll let you guys see and learn how I built this rocket, so that way you guys don't make the same mistakes. Now, when I start building rockets, I like to take my fin design and sketch it in a 2D shape onto my fin material. That way I have a template to cut out from. Then I take it to the lab and start cutting. In this case, I'm using an angle grinder and I'm cutting just outside the lines. That way I have a little bit of material to shave off later. The next most important thing to do is clamping them together and then taking them to the bell sander. It doesn't matter too much if they're identical to the CAD, but you want them to be identical to each other. That way, when they're in flight, there won't be any shifting or pitching. Next, you want to chamfer the leading edges. You don't ever want to chamfer the trailing edges unless you're extremely confident in the way you've built your rocket or you're using an absurdly large parachute. Plus, it doesn't really matter too much unless you're going above Mach 1. Now that the bottom fins are roughly completed, I can take them and glue them onto the motor tube along with two of the centering rings. Then, those centering rings have little guiders on them, that way the fins are completely straight, and all I have to do is glue on the upper fins and then glue on the last centering ring, which I put an eye bolt on. After that inner assembly was done, I started to work on the nose cone. It is two pieces, which I 3D printed and then glued together. After they were glued together, the lovely Miss Park sanded it down so that the entire thing was nice and smooth and was ready for me to put epoxy on. To fully join these two halves of nose cone together, I wanted to coat the entire thing in a layer of epoxy, and when I work on my V2, I'm going to use two layers of epoxy instead of just one. Then I had a little bit of epoxy left over, so I decided to coat the entire fin assembly in resin, that way there's no possible way for it to break on the inside. Now that layer of resin has cured on the nose cone, and I can go back and sand it all down. In between working on the nose cone and the inner assembly, I took the booster tube and used a combination of different tools like dremels and saws to cut the slots which the fins would slide into. What you want to do here is you want to take some masking tape or blue tape, and you want to tape off about a, a quarter inch section on either side around the fin. That way, when you put your fillets on with the resin and epoxy, it'll be way easier to clean off because all you have to do is peel off that tape. So what I do is, since my resin is pretty thin, I like to take cornstarch and use that to thicken it up. You kind of want to get it to a peanut butter consistency. You don't want it really too thick, otherwise the cornstarch can compromise the structural integrity of the resin. But you also don't want it super thin, that way it runs off. After that, it's really simple. All you have to do is kind of spoon it on there and then use either a popsicle stick or a spoon and kind of just like smooth it out. That way it makes some nice fillets. 
After that, you want to peel off all that tape, and the next part is my favorite step. What you want to do is put on a glove, or just use your ordinary finger, and you want to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and dip your finger in it. Then, you can use that to smooth out the fillets, and it makes it incredibly smooth. It makes post-processing super easy, because all you have to do is do a light sanding, and then after that, it's incredibly easy to get amazingly clean fillets. Now, the next step is kind of annoying because it's basically just sanding, sanding, a little more sanding, then some sanding, then you need to add a little bit more sanding, and then sand again. Also take some higher grit, sand, and then sand again, and then, oh, I think I'm forgetting something. Oh right, you have to sand it. Then take alcohol on a swab or paper towel or whatever you want, some type of cotton, and then wipe down the fins and the fin can. This is to get rid of any extra dust, and that sanding was to create the surface that is optimal for bonding when you do the fiberglass. What I did is I taped off all the sections and then just cut it so that you ended up with different pieces that all had tapes on all four sides. And you want to make your fiberglass sheets a good three to four inches wider than they need to be on either side because what I did happened to make them way too small and way too short and ended up making fiberglassing this thing incredibly difficult. Now I learned the next step the hard way and you really only want to make enough resin to do one side of the fins at a time. This stuff cures way too fast and you'll find yourself not having enough time in between cures to actually get the fin on the fiberglass on the fins. What you want to do is take the resin, put some on the surface, then wet out the cloth, and then put that on and squeegee out the rest. Then use your fingers to kind of like move it and shift it so that there is absolutely no bubbles. Bubbles are your enemy. You do not want bubbles. They will completely ruin the entire effect of having the fiberglass. So make sure you get out all the bubbles. Then once all of the resin has cured for about an hour, maybe you're hour and a half or two, you want to go back with a knife and cut off the extra. This is called when the resin is being green, and it makes it so that you can cut it with a knife without messing it up, and it makes it way easier to deal with in the end. After the fiberglass layup had fully cured, I took it to the lab. With proper equipment, you need gloves and a mask and glasses, because this is fiberglass, and the fibers are very dangerous. You do not want to breathe them. I also had fans running and the door open so that there was plenty of ventilation. What I did was I took the Dremel to start doing the rough shapes and then when I was happy with that, I went back with hand sanding and I sanded it more. Almost as much as I did beforehand, before the fiberglass, but not quite. You still want to sand it quite a lot, but you don't want to sand it too much because that ends up cutting into the fibers of the fiberglass and then weakening its, stru weakening its structural integrity. The next step was pretty simple. All you had to do was paint. We ended up doing a very complex paint job and I wasn't able to get it all on camera because it took so long, but to start off, all we did was paint it white.
right, uh, on high power eight, we have Aiden Borden. He has got an LED Mirage. It's a scratch belt rocket, 56 inches long, three inches diameter, three and a half pounds. Yes, record. Flying today on an I-175 Super Wide. Are recording for lower now? Nine second delay. He's got cameras on there, and the batteries are running low, so we are going to get it off the ground in five, four, three, two, one. What? Nice! Yeehaw! Um, that was interesting. That is very interesting. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, and we have a shoot. Ish, shoot, ish. Ish, 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 ish. That was soft enough. It'll be okay. Okay then.